Hey, what's going on YouTube? For those of you returning, welcome back. If this is your first time here, I don't like to pay people to do things that I may be capable of doing. So on this channel, I attempt to tackle various projects myself. So consider subscribing. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the final cost of my DIY solar installation. I have a series of videos going over the process of the installation. So be sure to check those out. So we're gonna check out the final cost and compare it to what I was quoted. So here is the cost breakdown. I kinda have it broken up into a few, few different sections. So on the first section is the main equipment. That's the, like the solar panels, the inverters, the combiner box, and um, basically all the main equipment. This is all the stuff that I got from Northern Arizona Solar and Wind, or Wind and Sun. Yeah, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. So that total cost came to just over $12,000. That was the initial purchase. I did get a portion of that uh, on a day when they were having a 10% discount. So next we have the miscellaneous equipment. That's all your wiring and conduit and all your tiny little pieces and that just, it, it all adds up. It wasn't all one purchase. I had to buy some here, some there, some on Amazon, some at Lowe's, some on eBay, and it all came up to just over $2,000. So for the permit packet design, I initially went with solar design tool, but it wasn't quite detailed enough for what I needed. Uh, also, the city of Phoenix requires a three line diagram and this only provides you a single line diagram. So it was not sufficient enough to get my permit from city of Phoenix. So I ended up getting my permit packet from DBM Designs. I will put a link to both Solar Design Tool and DBM Designs in the description so that you can go there and check it out and see if that's a, a good fit for you. It ended up costing me $350 for that design packet, but considering they put together the entire packet and uh, it turned out great and I was able to get my permit it was worth it. And considering some of the other companies that I checked into, uh, I believe Civic Solar was one of them, and there was a couple of others. Most of them required you buying their equipment from them in order to get their solar design packet, uh, as well as being far more expensive, like $1,000. So the, this $350 price was a lot easier to swallow. So this next one, not everybody is going to have this charge right here. So what this was, I made an appeal to the fire marshal because we have specific setbacks that we're supposed to follow for fire code. So there's actually supposed to be a three foot gap down from the ridge, just like right here, and a three foot gap along the edges, along the outside edges. This is to be, if, so fire departments can access the roof in case they need to ventilate smoke or anything like that in case of a fire. Also, in the ridge right here, you are supposed to maintain 18 inches if there are solar panels. So if there are solar panels here and here, you have to have 18 inches from here and then to the edge of the other solar panel. But if you don't have any solar panels on the adjacent roof, then you don't have to follow that 18 inches. But you are supposed to follow 18 inches down from the ridge and in from the edges. So I filed an appeal to the fire department allowing me to not follow 
that three foot rule, allowing me to go all the way up to the ridge and all the way out to the edge. I just had to show that they still had adequate access to the roof in case they needed to, needed to ventilate. And as you can see, there's still tons of access to the roof. Okay, so the reason I wanted to place the solar panels there, now in this picture, you can see a very large eucalyptus tree right here to the west. And right now it is winter, but even right now you can see how that area, right where I put the solar panels, that it currently has sun. It does get shaded for a portion of the day by this pine tree right here, which is to the south. But during the winter, I'm not quite as concerned with solar production as I am during the summer. I only use about 20 kilowatts of the, a day during the winter. So for, a, a, I think like two months out of the year for part of the day, the pine tree does shade that area. But in the first part of the day and then later in the afternoon, you can see the sun is hitting that area just fine. And then the other parts of the day, while this area is shaded on the side of the garage, it'll be completely open. Now during the summer, the, sh the sun shifts further over in the sky over here, and this tree shades the roof like all the way to this right in here. So I needed to shift the panels over to this part of the roof as far as I could. Here's another view of that. You can see the big eucalyptus tree right here. You can see how massive that thing is. And then you can see the pine tree in the bottom edge of the photo right there. Again, you can see the sun hitting that section of the roof in the evening. Again, this is during the winter, but you can still see that it's, that it's hitting. That was the reason for the appeal to the fire marshal, so that I could place the solar panels all the way to the ridge and all the way to the edge. Then this was the cost of the permit from the city of Phoenix. They do have different levels. I don't know what the lowest or the cheapest that you can pay. I want to say that it's like 150, but I'm not sure. I can't remember that right off the top of my head. I did prepay for two inspections just in case. Um, I didn't pay for a third one because the difference between two and three was $150. So I bump it up to 600. And if you have to pay for a third one afterwards, it's still $150. So I figured that I would just pay for the two. And also it's like a one hour minimum of review by somebody at the city of Phoenix just to make sure that it's good, I guess. And I figured I would pay for that since it's, I've never submitted for permits before, but you could spend less on getting that permit. Now the next line I have for the batteries, I did that on a separate line because not everybody is going to go with batteries. So that was the cost of the two batteries plus the mounting brackets. So I did that, that's why I put it on a separate line just so you could see that it's the different cost. So the total with the batteries came to $19,064. So the federal tax credit you can see is $5,700. In Arizona, we get a $1,000 tax rebate, leaving me with a total cost of just over $12,000 for a 9.27 kilowatt system with two batteries. Okay, so here is what prompted me to look into doing this whole system myself. This is a quote that I got from a local solar company called American Solar. And as you can see, it was for a 7.8 kilowatt system. So I started, they gave me a 
list of all the equipment that they would be using. And like I do with so many other things, I started researching it because I wanted to know about the quality of the equipment they were gonna use and stuff like that. And I started to come across pricing. The LG panels were some of the more expensive panels. I know that they are good panels. I'm not saying anything about that. But with this listed equipment here, with the LG panels and the SMA solar inverter, which is a string inverter, I could have gotten all of this equipment myself for about 8,500. That doesn't, that does not account the, any of the wiring or the, the mounting hardware or anything like that, but that's just the inverter and the panels. So as you can see, it would be 26 panels for a total of a 7.8 kilowatt system. So the total that they gave me was $24,540 for the cash price. If I financed it with their financing company of Green Sky, it then pushes the price to $29,000. So since I did it myself, I dropped the price down to $19,000. That is a bigger system that is 9.27 compared to 7.8 kilowatts plus two batteries of storage for a total cost of $19,064 compared to the $24,540. So it, it doesn't sound like it's a lot. It's, a, it, it's only about a $5,500 difference. But when you're talking about a bigger solar system for less, plus batteries, and I'm still $5,500 less. That's significant to me. But then if you only compare solar system to solar system, so if you don't do the batteries and you just do the panels, then you're talking at a cost of $15,260 compared to the $24,540. Now you're at about a $9,000 cap by doing it yourself. Plus, again, it's still a bigger system and it's more efficient because it's not a series. When you wire panels in series, if one panel gets partially shaded, that entire series is affected. That entire series is the power output is reduced. With the microinverter system that I installed, if one panel is reduced for whatever reason, say even a leaf fell on the panel or whatever, that on, only that one panel is affected. It doesn't affect any of the other panels. So it's a bigger system, more efficient for $9,000 less. So after the rebates, if you're just talking about the panels and not the batteries, then the cost would be $9,600 after the federal and state rebates. So that's a pretty significant difference to me. And that was a significant enough difference for me to be willing to go ahead and tackle, try and tackle this myself. So as you can see, the cost difference is definitely there. The cost savings is definitely there. This is what prompted me to look into seeing if I was allowed to do it myself. I knew I was capable of doing it, but uh, I had to do some research to see if the city or power companies would get mad if I tried to attempt it myself or they have some sort of deals trying to keep you from doing it. It was a little bit more complicated since I wasn't experienced with doing it and dealing with the power companies or the city, but in the end, I was able to get it done. The solar system was easy. It was an easy installation. I was able to do just about everything myself. The only time I had help with any of it was when I helped my girlfriend, or my girlfriend helped me pull the six gauge wire through a hundred foot of conduit. 
That was the only time I had help. Any other time I was able to do everything myself, including getting the panels on the roof myself. I thought I would need help in that, but I was able to do that all by myself. So it was, it was pretty cool. And uh, it was a long process. It took me several weeks to accomplish. And the most challenging parts were dealing with SRP and the city of Phoenix. I had to resubmit my permit like three times to get it to pass. That's because trying the solar design tool, the single line, they denied it for that. And then when I did go with DBM, there was a couple of discrepancies that it got kicked back one more time. And then I just said, hey, city of Phoenix wants these things and they fixed them. And third time it passed, no problem. So those were the most challenging points. So the system's been on for a month, month and a half now. And I've had one month where it was, had the solar system on for the entire month. And the bill itself was about $50. But then I produced enough extra electricity to drop it down to 25. So the bill breakdown, it was like $34 for the service charge. Then SRP with solar has this demand charge. So even though I didn't use any power from them, I get dinged for the demand. So if I pull too much electricity, too, it, too much electricity too fast back from the grid, I get dinged with the demand. And that's the goal with the batteries is to eliminate the demand. The problem is, is my two in-phase batteries do not produce enough electricity in order to offset the demand, in order to zero it out. So you have to have zero demand in order to not have a demand charge. So that's the next thing that I'm going to be addressing is the battery situation. In one of my upcoming videos, I will com be comparing my in-phase batteries to the Tesla power walls, which is in the future. So be sure to uh, stay tuned to check those out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more I Can Do It Myself videos.